Okay, hello everyone and welcome to College Week. So glad all of you can join us for this workshop, Personal Finance for Middle Schoolers, presented by Ms. Stacy Castro from Excite Credit Union. Before getting started, we want to know who's in our audience. Please do take a second to complete the poll that will pop up on your screen in just a moment. The poll shows three languages, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Also feel free to use the chat for any comments or questions throughout the presentation. Of course, we do ask that you be mindful and respectful in the chat and keep the conversation relevant to the topic. Thank you all again for joining us. Now let's get started. I'd like to welcome and introduce Ms. Daisy Castro. Go ahead and kick us off. Hi everybody, this is Daisy and today we're gonna to be presenting, like um, Christina said, we're gonna be talking about personal finance and joining me today is Alita Smith, my, co my colleague over at Excite Credit Union. So we're going to talk about money. Um, it's, this is this topic is going to be very important for the rest of your life. And we're going to be taking it really easy today, though. We're not going to be talking about anything crazy. Um, we're just going to talk about the basics of money and how you take care of your money. And that how you take care of it is your personal finance. And that's what it is. So don't think it's anything complicated. So let's get started. This is what we're going to be going over today. We're going to be going over... Um, how, like, under, first of all, how to understand the difference between a credit union and a bank. Then we're going to be going over um, knowing the consequences of being in banks. And if we're not sure of what being in banks means, we're going to learn about that soon. Um, how to select a financial institution. So how do we pick where we want to open our first checking and savings account? Because most likely that first time you open it, that's probably going to be where you're going to be for, for a while, right? Because usually people don't like switching. And then we're going to talk about budgeting. Now budgeting is super important, but we're gonna talk about the very basics and um, also a little bit about savings. And then finally, why we pay taxes. Um, I wanted to go over this because I remember when I got my first paycheck, I wasn't sure why I didn't receive all my money. And I just wanna make sure that you guys know that you know after we, pay, we get our pay, there's a certain amount that's taken off for taxes. So that's what we're gonna be going over today. Okay, so let's get started with credit union versus banks. So when we go out to the community, one of the first things we aim to explain is the difference between a credit union and a bank. So we are a credit union, and like banks, we offer checking accounts, uh, credit cards, car loans, mortgages. But unlike a bank, uh, we are not-for-profit, meaning that, our operating, that after operating expenses, earnings are returned back to our members. So if you see here, there's a little chart right here in the picture that says not for uh, credit unions are, and then you said not for profit, member owned, and member represented, while banks are profit oriented, corporate owned, and corporate represented. So money that is made by the bank goes to its stakeholders, where money that is made by the credit union goes back to its members, meaning you, right? So if you are a credit union member. So just remember that the key takeaways is that credit unions are owned by their members and we keep money local and we reinvest it back into our community. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Is there any questions, Alita, on the chat? No? Okay. Okay, cool. So let's go on to our next one. So we're gonna watch a little video I wanted to show you guys the video before we start talking about being in banks because I think that would be that would be important. So let's go ahead. We're not going to watch the whole thing. We're just going to watch uh, like three minutes of it. Did you know that 70 million Americans, more than a quarter of the population, do not have a bank account? Instead, they rely on check cashing stores, payday lenders, and other fringe financial service providers that aren't subject to the same rules and regulations as chartered banks. And often, these charge exorbitant fees and interest rates that regular banks could never get away with. In her book, How the Other Half Banks, Marisa Baradaran explores the somewhat ironic high cost of banking while poor and offers some more equitable solutions. Thanks for joining us. So well, why, where is this gap uh, created? Why isn't there an incentive for all banks to reach out to all people with money? The gap is fairly new. So starting in the 1980s, a lot of community banks started shutting down branches in lower income areas, inner city neighborhoods, areas where their profit margins were lower than in other areas. And so part of it is it's, it's higher cost to lend to someone or to take a small deposit than it is to get a big deposit, right? Your, your overhead is the same whether you're 
you know, taking in $100,000 versus taking in $500, but your, you know, revenue off of that $100,000 is much higher than it is off of that small deposit. And so these banks started leaving these areas, and part of it is that the government, you know, deregulatory forces allowed them to merge and form these huge conglomerates such as Bank of America. So as these banks leave, they leave this void for banking services. And this is a void that quickly is filled by these fringe lenders. So payday loans, check cashing. Um, and as you said, these are big. Okay, so we'll stop there. But the important part that I wanted you guys to grasp is that because there isn't any community banks or there isn't as many anymore, um, it has left a hole in the market. And now that hole is being, set, is being filled in by check cashers and payday lenders. And I'll explain a little bit more, but let's watch another segment before we start talking about it. Okay, let me load this up. Oh, there we go. So we're just gonna watch, this is a full documentary. It's about 40 minutes long and it talks about, you know, the, the rise of payday lenders here in the United States. So, but we're just gonna watch about two minutes of it. I kind of just want you guys to look out for some things and really pay attention to the story of, of these two uh, characters right here. Exactly sure when it's gonna clear. And I have to pay my bill. You go to the check casher, you get the money back minus the fee. You have that money in your hands right at that moment. It's not an irrational choice. It's just not a productive choice, and it's a costly choice. Underserved Americans spend the same percent of their income on fees and interest as the typical American family spends on groceries. That amounts to $89 billion a year. As a way to avoid fees, Alex and Melissa decided to live on cash. We have cash on hand, and that's the money that we have. This is all we can spend. So when the money runs out, that's it. On payday, getting to places so I can get the bills paid on time. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm here to pay the power. Thank you so much. Take care. Not a problem. Being unbanked is really something like having a part-time job. I probably spend quarters and half in gas, driving around and paying bills. You're going to spend more money and more time doing things that people who are in the banking system take for granted and usually do for free. You go to a check casher, you are automatically having to pay somebody to get your money. Now you want to pay a bill. Well, you have a wad of cash. How are you going to pay your bill? Hey, do I just need to put some money on this phone? Money is becoming more and more digital, which means there are less places that accept cash. That makes life for the underserved even more expensive. We have prepaid debit card, and the money that's on the card is real cash. It's cash that I directly hand to people, and they turn it into fake money for me. It's convenient. You know, if you don't have a bank account, you can still do everything everybody else does, but you get taxed. Justin not only pays a fee turning his checks into cash and his cash into a card, he pays a fee for every purchase he makes. There's a transaction and there's a buck and a transaction, a buck and a buck, all the way down the board, and then it just kills you very quickly. Okay, so we'll stop there, but let's go to our, now we're, now we're going to actually talk about, you know, what is being unbanked, kind of what we saw in the video. We heard unbanked. Um, does anyone want to guess what unbanked means? Maybe put it in the chat. Well, I'm going to, as you can see here, I have the answer right here. So unbanked uh, means that it's, if you, that means that you have no, actually no account with any bank. You are unbanked. You have no checking account, no savings account. You rely on cash, kind of like we saw in the video where she just, you know, paid her bills in person and drove around the city looking for places to pay her bill at. And then underbanked means that you do have a checking and savings, but you still use uh, check cashiers or payday lenders. Now, check cashiers, are you probably see them around in like they're tucked away in the end of the store like in a little corner usually walmart has them some grocery stores have them and it's where you basically do your banking in a way like you you cash your check but every time you cash your check into money so 
you get charged fees. And normally those fees wouldn't happen if you were at a bank, it's, it's free. Your money just goes into your account. It just takes a little bit longer than if you were to go to check cashier. Cash, check cashier, you get your money right away. And I think that is why people um, go to check cashiers to get their money in, in hand right away. Whereas in a bank, it might take them a while to clear. Um, so let's review these questions. So what does it mean to be unbanked? It means that you have no access to any kinds of banking, um, whether that's a checking or savings account. What does it mean to be underbanked? Well, that means that you have no, uh, you do have a savings and a checking, but you still use uh, your the check cashier around you. And then from the clips that we watched, now this is a question for you guys, and I do want you guys to put it in the chat. There's no wrong answers. I just kind of want to see what you guys are thinking. So from the clips we watched, um, why do you think people are underbanked or unbanked? Let's see if we get any, let's see if we get any answers. <laughs> I hope, um, let me see. Ooh, I do see some, yay. Uh, oh, no, undocumented. That, yeah. is, that is a very good um, answer, yes. Very true. Why are people under them? Yeah, I think that, that is one of the major, major ones for sure. And another one that kind of ties into that one is people don't really trust banks anymore. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, probably too young to remember this, but we had a big crash back in 08 and that, that had to do with banks. Um, they, were, they, were, they weren't doing, you know, ethical stuff and people lost a lot of money in that time. Um, yeah, that's another, Mariana, that's another um, good um, answer um, um, that some parents might be undocumented or fearful of, fearful of getting caught. So they, they live on cash, right? And because they live on cash, they're paying, and it's really expensive to live on cash as we saw. You know, the lady had to drive around all around town to pay her bills that she needs to pay gas. The gentleman we saw with the, the debit card, the what is it, prepaid debit card? Every time he wanted to make a transaction, he got, he got account fees. And it might seem a little, it might seem just a dollar or two, but they, it adds up, right? And that money, instead of you paying it to someone for fees, it could be going to your savings account. Um, so we are going to learn that it's, you know, the, the key here is little by little, either your account will grow or it will be very, it will, it will like decrease, right? Little, little things make a big difference. Um, and um, yeah, so thank you for, for participating. <gasps> oh, sorry. <laughs> and then let's see this other one, self-reflection. Do you know any people that are currently unbanked or underbanked? Um, or I just kind of want you guys to think, think about that. Like maybe, I know I realized it when I started you know, doing research about unbanked and underbanked. I actually used a check cashier back when I was in high school. I, I got my first paycheck and um, I didn't have a bank account yet. And I needed that money to be turned quickly into cash. And my mom took me to a check cashier and I, and I, and I cashed my check. I paid like $10, but at that moment I was like, whatever, it's $10. I just want my, my money. Right. So it's, it, it's something for you guys to think about. Have you guys ever been maybe with your parents, right. To, to a grocery store where they, they cash your check or maybe going to a payday lender, which are really high interest uh, loans. So these are just things I want you guys to start thinking about. Um, but let's go to, on to the next slide. And just really quick, Thomas also said um, people are underbanked because they go to the check cashers to get their money a lot faster. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but there is a remedy to that potentially, right? So we're going to be telling you about that. Um, and then uh, Mariana said sadness um, about this fact is that the students believe um, that business transactions and handling home issues are done this way. All right, we can go ahead. Okay, thank you. No, I was just, I, was, I wanted to see the comments, but it wasn't loading. <laughs> um, so I uh, thank you guys for your participation. So let's go on to the, why it's so important to be banked. Now, I, I, I am going to show you guys this really quick. I just want to see, I just want you guys to see that different states have a similar problem to what's going on here in California. And, pretty much all around all around the United States. So let me look up this map here. We're just gonna kind of compare two states. Um, I'll actually let you guys pick the state to compare to California to. So uh, let me know what state you want me to compare. 
so you could we could pick another um, one. Um, anyone want to pick a state? Is there any states listed there, Lita? Texas. Texas. Okay, cool. Let's go to Texas. Texas, Texas, Texas. Texas. Okay, so before I click it, which one do you think is going to be more on banks, California or Texas? Let's That's see. A um, let's see. That is a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is California. there any any people in the ch California? Oh, so um, we're, we're gonna see which one is more unbanked. Okay, cool. So here we are. So what, what's our answer? If we look at that chart, it's Texas. Texas is more unbanked. Now we don't know why. We don't go that far deep in, but. Um, it could be just, you know, maybe there isn't as many banks or around communities and people just don't want to use banks. So they go and use check cashers instead. There's a lot of different reasons why people are in banks. Texas um, but, has yeah. as well. So that's something to consider. Well, what's that, Alita? Texas has rural areas. So they're oh, further yeah. away mm -hmm. from pretty much anything. That's true. That's We're more of a... What is it like city? Well, we have some some rural here in California, but maybe you're right. Maybe there's more rural areas in Texas and that's why there's less resources. Okay, well, good job there. So that's interesting, right? Learning about, you know, different, different states having the same problem. And this is a problem that we really want to kind of fix because we know that it, saves, it will save people a lot, of, a lot of money, right, being banked. And now we want to look at this chart here so if you look at the unbanked here, how do unbanked people save their money? Um, now you can just find the answer if you just go to, um, the, you get the color and you go here. So we see that unbanked people, so meaning people that have no access to any type of uh, bank or credit union, um, they save their, their money in home or with family or friends. Now why is that kind of scary? Are why anyone be dangerous? Dangerous, so yeah. yeah. Yep, if there's a fire or something and you can't get mm -hmm. your money in time, mm -hmm. you lose it all. Mm -hmm. There's a fire. What if someone just breaks in your house and steals that money? Yep, someone can steal it. Yeah, someone could steal it. Okay. So then we go to underbanked. Um, and remember, underbanked are folks that do have a checking and savings. So they already have access to it, but they still use check cashers or pity lenders from time to time. So let's look at how what happened here. So this is people that have access to a banking account. Um, how do they save their money? Let's see. Let's see if we get any answers here. Look at the color and then go down here and look at the at the chart. How do how do underbanked people save their money? Savings, savings account? Yeah, savings account. So that, that already tells us, right, that with just people having that savings account, it makes a big difference. Now they're actually putting it in the bank where it's insured and um not it can't be stolen like that. So thank you. And then Fully banked. Well, obviously, fully banked, um, it's going to be savings account because if you're fully banked, then most likely you use your your accounts all the time, and you're 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 good on your personal finance, right? You know how to manage your money. Um, not all the time, right? Just because we have a bank account doesn't <laughs> mean we know how to manage your money. But it kind of it's the first step to having like you know that that um like the groundwork for for personal finance. So let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so now um, when you guys are maybe, uh, I believe most of you guys are in middle school, so you're getting around there. Alita, remind me again, our youth account is 13 and up, right? So they are yeah. able to. So mm -hmm. if you guys are interested, like in the future, you know, you can start opening your uh, a youth account or uh, an account. I think some banks also offer it. 
Um, but if you're interested in opening one, you, the first thing you should do is kind of look around to see what's available to you. So this is a chart that we made back in the summer. So full disclosure, a lot of things might have changed then because of the pandemic. You know, maybe some of the seats went down and some of these minimum imbalances went down. So if you look here, it's kind of like a comparison chart um, that kind of uh, makes it easy to look at what's going to be the best choice for you. I don't know if you guys remember making Venn diagrams or if you guys still do that, because that's what I did back in elementary school. But it's kind of like that. Um, you get all the, maybe these things could change. You know, maybe you're not interested in Make of America. Maybe you're interested in Citibank or something. Look up all the things that you want to um, open an account for and maybe a credit union or two. And look up each, each um, go and research each company and see what they're offering. So, for example, if you go to Excite Credit Union page, the, you're going to see the requirements there. You have to be 18 and up. This is for our go checking, right? The minimum opening deposit for our account is 25. There is no minimum balance. So, that means that you don't have to have anything on your account. Um, and some banks do require that. And then there are no monthly fees. Right, so okay, you have that option. Then we go to Bank of America. Remember, this stuff can change out. It might have changed, so just do your own uh, research. But I just want you guys to see what the process can be when you're choosing to go open an account for with someone. So you look here; they have to be 18 and up. The opening deposit for Bank of America in this case, right, is $100. Um, the minimum balance is 1,500. So if, does anyone have a question on that? Like, what does it mean, minimum balance? What does that mean? Or what do you guys think it means? So pretty much what it means is that the bank requires you to have, yeah, how much you keep in there, exactly. So if you go below that, they might charge you. Now, I can't remember how much the fee is, Lita. Do you have an estimate on maybe how, how much are those fees if you're with it's like the monthly maintenance fee. It can be anywhere from like ten dollars over. So ten dollars and over. Okay. So they might charge you for that. And then on top of that, you also have to pay a monthly fee of twelve dollars. So you go, okay, so that's one option, right? And so you kinda this is what you want to do when you're starting to look for a checking or a savings account. Just like you when you're buying a phone or when you're buying a lotion or shampoo, you know, you compare the two and you're looking at what's gonna be best for you. The same thing you want to do with a checking and a savings account. So look at what's going to give you the lowest fees, what's going to be the lowest minimum balance, right? Especially when you guys are going to college, you don't want to be paying crazy amount of fees. That money could be easy to buy food or, you know, uh, going out with your friends instead of spending it on fees. Um, so just kind of like look at those things, late fees, cost, the cost, the perks, the convenience, right? Um, Look and really do your research. I think the easiest way to do it is kind of like make a, a, a chart, right? And write everything down in a notebook or on Google Sheets or whatever, um, however you guys feel comfortable with, but just make sure that you make the best decision for you. Um, don't always go on to what your parents currently use or, you know, I, I think that's probably the route most of us go to is whatever my parents have, that's where I'm going to sign up for a bank account, right? But we want to make uh, better choices. Maybe sometimes their parents aren't banks, right? Or maybe they are and they're, they belong to a bank that charges them crazy fees. So look and know that you always have options. There's a lot of options out there. Amalita, um, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no. Okay, okay, cool. So if any, and no one else has any questions. Um, oh, I see Mariana Hughes. Uh, yes, that would be a perfect, um, we do have our youth uh, savings account and our youth checking. We, um, if you would like more information about that, Mariana, you can email us and we can give you more information um, about those and maybe you can share that with your students. Okay, so now we're gonna get into budgeting basics. And um, this is a really, this subject, some adults haven't mastered yet. So the fact that you guys are already starting to plan about budgeting is a huge step. So pretty much the only thing that I really want to kind of focus on today is needs versus wants. Um, and I think that is pretty much like the ultimate best advice you can give when you're starting to budget is we want to divide, we want to kind of separate the needs and the wants. Um, um, oh, let me see. Anna has a question. Yes, uh, I can answer that for you, Anna. For so sure. you can change banks anytime you want to. 
Um, and changing, uh, checking our savings account to another bank does not affect your credit score. Uh, those are two very different things. So if you want to change a bank, you just have to let them know, you know, go into the branch, say, you know, I want to um, close my account. They'll either, um, they should give you at least a cashier's check um, because you shouldn't be walking around with lots of cash. Um, and then you can just take it to the bank that you want to switch over to. Um, but the credit score will not be affected at all. Thank you, Leah, for answering that. Um, but but we were talking it was well needs and wants right um now needs are things that we need to live and survive and wants are things that we would like to have but we don't need to survive and right now i think one of the i was watching a video and we saw that computer was in wants now is that true today <laughs> is that true right now maybe i think the computer is probably in a, a need right because we're on our we're doing distance learning and we're working from home. So it changes, right? And um, everyone's needs and wants are different. And that is, that is the kind of the cool thing about a budget is you get to determine what's a need and a want. And you have that control, right? But, we, but the thing we want to do and the thing that's important is tracking that stuff because if you don't track it, it's gonna get out of hand. And I kind of always compare, um, budgeting with calorie counting kind of almost because because you don't really realize how much you're spending until you actually sit down and write it down now right now you might think like well i have no expenses you know i don't really have a checking account i don't have a savings account um but maybe if you think about how many times have we gotten birthday money or we gotten allowances and we just blow it like you know we go out with our friends to get you know 7-eleven runs or we go to buy food, right? So that stuff adds up, right? And it's, and it's okay to, to go out and eat and, and get uh, snacks with your friends. We just don't wanna do it all the time because that stuff is gonna add up, right? And then you're not gonna have anything saved. Um, so the first thing that when you guys are old enough to you know, have an account or even today, if you have money coming in, maybe when you get birthday money or you get allowance um, or you do, you know, some kids do wash dishes and, and they, you know, <laughs> with at their house and they maybe even earn some a little bit of money um we want to kind of save that money and then use it for something that is going to benefit you like maybe you want to save for a computer right that's that's going to be a big investment that you do want to save for so kind of things like that is just thinking about what are needs and what are wants and being um very real with yourself <laughs> right um i think that's the first step is that mind shift and seeing what is something that I need. You know, I do need clothes for school or I do need water, right, um, food. But do I need to buy candy or do I need to, um, you know, what is the other thing? I know a big thing that kids do or from what I heard, um, they uh, buy things through this uh, game. What is the games, right? You could buy stuff in games now. I think it's called... Um, yeah, purchases. <laughs> Yeah, it's like in-app purchases. Yeah, so are those in-app purchases or like, um, what is that game, Fortnite? I know Fortnite was really popular. You'd actually buy stuff. Yeah, maybe Roblo Roblox, <laughs> something. So just make sure you're taking care of your money, right? So the thing is that needs and wants, right? Always check yourself if you're like, is this a need or is this a want? And then, you know, you could go from there. So that is the ba budgeting basics. So you told you it wasn't gonna be that crazy. This is pretty much what it is, needs and wants. Um, Every dollar adds up quickly, yes. So let's go on to this next one, which, um, oh, let's see how, oh, we're good on time, okay. So I do wanna show you guys this really quick video. Um, it's uh, budgeting basics, right? So we're gonna see, I believe she's like, you know, maybe 15, just open her account and she's just spending money like crazy. So let's look at that. <laughs> Ah, oh, sweet. I can't pass up a good deal. Come in, come in. Grasp my palm with silver to unlock the secrets of eternal prosperity. Um, it's 20 bucks, kid. What? I mean, of course. I thought this was supposed to be a cheaper place. I sense, I sense your name is Jen. Jen. Wow. And you appear to be a plumber. 
Nope, but there is more to meet the eye. For you have some sort of part-time job? Yes. Great. So, you have a regular paycheck coming in. Draw a card, Jen. Choose wisely. <gasps> oh, no. What does it mean? Oh, that's just car insurance. That's usually an annual one. So, that goes over here. Draw another. Oh, my. With that card, I sense a powerful energy here. The utilities card? Wait a second. Utilities, income, expenses. Are you budgeting me? Well, yeah. I thought you read fortunes. You won't have any fortune left for me to read unless you know how much you spend versus how much you earn. Your income is actually less than your paycheck or salary. When planning a budget, you must factor in taxes and deductions. Otherwise, you will be budgeting money you don't even have. But budgeting is mostly for saving up for big stuff, right? I pay my rent and internet, and I still have money left over. So, I'm good. How do you know what you can and can't afford? Um, well, I look at my account balance, and if there's money there, I know I can spend it. <gasps> your palm! Show me your palm! Palm reading. Now we're talking. Ow. No more spending until you give every dollar a job. Part of that account balance that you're freely spending on fun stuff should actually be going to savings and one-time payments. Budgeting doesn't mean feeling guilty for fun purchases. It means feeling confident about them. Like being in control of your own destiny. Sure. Look, my crystal. Okay, so let's stop there. So we learned, you know, it's really important to, you know, how she was just spending her money, right? And every dollar adds up quickly. So the fortune teller, the budget fortune teller was telling her how to, she was budgeting her and putting her stuff in different piles. And that's what you guys will be doing soon when you guys get your first, you know, accounts and when you get your first jobs, that's what, that's how you want to manage your money. You want to be putting money towards things and not just spending it. And the cool thing is that we are going to get to see kind of like a, like a bank simulation that I'm going to show you guys. And um, this is going to be uh, for you guys to look at. So let's look at this account. So this is a mock, it's like a mock account. Now we're going to, so this is how an account looks like, right? When you open it on your app or when you go online and you, and you log in your account, this is how it looks like. There's like home and then you go to account activity um, and you have like, you could either go into your savings or your checking. So let's look at our checking first. Oh, let me log in really quick. Sorry. Let me log in, it logs me out. <laughs> But let's uh, see. If, does anyone have any questions while I log in? Okay, cool. Now I'm logged in. So this is what it looks like. And I want you guys to see <clears throat> this is going to be like a typical you know, 14 year old, 15 year old that just got their account and has a part time job. Uh, there's a question. Let me yes, see. I see that. She's saying, so, so is there, oh, go ahead. Is there a certain method you can use to give every, everything, to give everything or all the money you spend, right? Is that what you mean? I think so. So yeah, there's there are two methods that we use to budget or everything you want to buy. Hmm. Well, I think I, I think I know what she's asking. Like what methods are there to kind of budget your money? Is that what you're asking, Lucy? Um, because we do there's two types of budgeting methods. We have like the 50, 30, 20, and 50% goes to your needs, 30% goes to your wants, and 20% goes to your savings. And then there's the zero to zero base budgeting, which is what the fortune, the budget fortune teller was talking about. Um, thank you, um, Christina. Yes, that's 50, 30, 20 rule. And then there's a zero base budget, which is what the budget fortune was talking about when you give every dollar a job. So, um, for example, if you have $200, and you have to give a hundred of that dollars is going to go to maybe buying clothes for the month. The other hundred dollars, it doesn't mean that it just fits in your checking account. You want to put it in this, like at least like, you know, $50 in savings. And then the other 50, you want to um, pay towards something or kind of like that. You want to make sure that every dollar has a job and you're putting that money to work, if that makes sense. 
and Emerus. I hope I said your name right. Um, he's asking about credit and we will get to that um, just on a few more slides. So I'll answer your question uh, when we start the credit portion, okay? So let's look at this really quickly so we can get to that credit part because yeah. Uh, okay, so you just have to on your name. Well, yeah, it's completely up to you, Lucy. Like, it's kind of like, um, if you want to, if like, you know that, that, that you don't need to spend that money that month and you want to put it away in a savings before you spend it, then yeah, you can make that decision as in, okay, I'm only gonna spend uh, $50 for fun stuff this month and the other 50 is gonna go to my savings. So it's completely up to you how you want to like make that breakdown. If you have nothing to spend that month and it's just because you want to spend it because it's there, you want to at least give yourself some, some fun money to spend, but also you want to put a good chunk of that away in a savings account. I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and go through here and maybe you'll get a better idea on what I mean by that. So, um, so this person, so what do we see here? Any trends that we see? Can we go through this account and look? Um, any trends? What are the trends that we see? Lots of lots of snacks. Yeah, lots of snacks. Lots of snacks. And then what else? Is this person working or? Yes. It looks like they are working because they get a paycheck for seventy-five dollars, and it looks like it's every two weeks. So they're definitely working. They're probably doing um some kind of part-time job, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it seems like they do a lot of shopping. Yeah, cafe club, movie card. Okay, so let's let's go back a little bit and look at the same, the same thing. So it's like this cycle, right, of just earning and spending. Um, but let's see if they have, well, we can't judge them just on their checking. Let's go and judge them on their savings. <laughs> let's see how much this person saves. Okay, <clears throat> so how, mu how much has this person made in their savings? Have they, have they deposited any money since they've opened the account? They opened their account with 250, right? And how much have they put in here? Only, only yeah, they ha only, this little is actually the interest. So when you put your money in the savings account, it depends on bank or credit union. They, they uh, give you your money. They give interest to your money. So for example, um, let's say, um, what is our percentage right now, Alita? Do you know? I totally forgot. Um, on the regular accounts, I think it was like upwards of, well, it used to be on the youth account, um, like 5%. And I think it still is. Yeah. So it it kind of on the youth on the youth account that I was talking about earlier, that's five percent and that's really high because it's for youth. But our normal checking and and savings, I think it's like at a one, right? It used yeah. to be high, but it drops because of the economy. But it it depends on what that interest is. They're gonna give you an interest when you're opening the account. Um and your and that interest is gonna show how much money you get every month. It's usually every month that it changes. So, for example, here it's every month. The two you see, it's two months, three months, four months, five months. Um, so it depends. So she actually hasn't added any money. This has only been interest accumulated in her account. So she sits this money here, and without doing anything, this money grows. So that's the cool part of say, about a savings account with a high interest. Um, and usually you don't find that at big banks. Usually big banks are like 0 0.01. Um, there are some online banks that have like high interest uh, savings accounts, but that's like something you want to look at. Um, but yeah, that is so pretty much this person has put no savings. So what is as you know, so now that you guys are experts, uh, let's look, go back at the checking and let's, um, let's kind of see how much money would you have put in a savings account if this was your account? Like, let's say that here is the, um, you know, July, June 6th, I mean, June 1st, right? And you're like, you know what, it's time to change. I want to put some money in my, in my savings. How much money from your paycheck would you have put in that savings account? And then keep that going for, you know, until forever, pretty much. Like, what's a good amount to put from that $75, do you think? 
because it doesn't seem like any of these are needs, right? Um, cool snacks, paycheck. Let's see if there's a mobile shopping, um, mobile shopping. So none of this, it doesn't seem like this person is paying any type of bill. Like, I don't think they're paying any bill. So it doesn't seem like they have, um, yeah, so these are all just, all these are wants. But we do, we don't want to take out the, the fun, right? And we do want to keep some fun money. So how much, so someone said 15. That's a uh -huh. good amount. 15 for saving every month. Yeah. 30, 40. 30, yeah. 40. Yeah, that's fine. And I also want to point out this account. He, uh, this person was also making um, ATM withdrawals. And oh, he yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, they were also charged for those fees as well because it was out of network. So that's something mm -hmm. that you all want to consider when you have, you know, a debit or credit card, you want to know where you could pull your money off for free. Um, and if it's at, you know, a bit larger bank, you could go to the banks um, and you can pull your money from the ATMs for free. Um, if you have a credit union, there's a co-op um, and you can find the nearest ATM to where you don't have to um, have any extra money being taken from your account. So that's something that you also want to make sure that you're managing when you do get a debit card. Mm -hmm. this is great. Yeah, good eye, Alita. Good one. So let's, let's do that really quickly then. Let's just add them really quickly. So we have one here. Where is it at? I just, oh, one here. So one. Then we have two. Then we have, I'm sure there's another one over here. Let's see, three, four. So four already in just two, like three months. So that's like what, 12 bucks that they could have saved and put in their savings instead of just paying it in fee. So it adds up, remember. But good job um, on those two savings. So 15, 30, 40, yeah, that's a good one. And it's completely up to you, remember. It's kind of, it's your money, so the decision is yours. Um, but let's get out of this one. So yeah, so the thing that we are going to talk about next is like, um, saving. So I'll let Alita talk a little bit about this. All right. So yes, savings. Um, like Daisy said before, you want to make sure that you're paying yourself first. So when you get your paycheck, of course, you want to make sure that all of your bills are paid. But then after that's done, you want to look at what you have left. And you want to make sure that you put um, money away. There's two types of savings that I would suggest that you have. So if you decide that you want to be banked, you'll have your general checking and savings account. But I also want you to save for emergencies. And so this could be a separate account that you have. Um, and you want to make sure that you're putting money in that account as well. And you want to leave it there because this is just going to be your emergency account because things happen all the time and you never know when they're going to happen because they're emergencies. And most families cannot, um, cannot afford a $400 emergency, right? So you have your general savings along with your checking and then have um, another savings account that is just for emergencies. I wouldn't um, advise on putting them together because you know once you start reaching, your, you, you set goals, right? And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to buy this or buy that and you could be taking from your emergency fund. So you don't want to do that. Um, and again, you don't have to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, right? You could save $10 a week. You could save $5 a week. And it's okay because at the end of the day, it adds up. So, and that is what's going to matter. So start wherever you are. Do not compare yourself to others. That can get us in trouble. So do what you can with your circumstances, right? So that's one of the biggest things about savings. Thank you, Alita. Let's, that's the true, don't ever compare yourself to your savings situation. Just do what you can and focus on what you can do. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, so I'm, re I'm briefly gonna talk about this because we do, Alita does have some really cool credit stuff to talk to us about. So I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. Um, so when I first got my check, I thought that, I, you know, I had calculated my income because I was getting $10 an hour and I worked 40 hours a week. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get $400 every week. And then when I get my paycheck, right, I noticed that it wasn't $400. Um, 
because we pay taxes, right? So the um, the government takes taxes it, to to pay for programs. And where does see if we see this picture here, where does our tax money go? Well, there's three like three buckets that it goes to, right? It goes to like uh, there's a big bucket for discretionary spending, which is like defense, military, education, transportation, health. So the buses you see out there, schools. Um, and then we have mandatory spending, which is like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, veteran benefits. So that money that is being taken away from your check is going to, to fund these programs here. Um, so that is where your money goes. And there's a state tax and there's a federal tax. And it might seem like, oh, my gosh, you know, but that is just a part of, you know, living, living and in, in, in here and here in the States. And it's, it's totally fine because we get some of this stuff back, you know, in our community, like libraries and transportation. So that is where your money goes. So always consider that when you're, you know, like I was when I got my when I got my first job, I had calculated my my how much I was going to be earning, right? But I didn't get that money because I didn't take into account taxes that you have to pay. So I was going to show you guys this quick video, but I'm going to instead hand it over to Alita because we do want to cover a little bit about credit, um, kind of just the basics. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions about this. And while Alita is talking, maybe I can answer them in the chat. So Alita, it's all yours. All right, so we have about 13 minutes. So first, I just want to go over what is credit, because you probably hear it all the time. And there was a question that asked, you know, is it important? And I want to say it is very, very, very important. But to begin, what is it? It's credit is the ability to borrow money or access goods and services with the understanding that you will pay later. And your credit score can be anywhere from 300, which is low, to 850, which is perfect credit. Um, and so we'll move on. Um, do you have time? Do you have time to show this little video here? Um, we have 12 minutes. I think we can show it. But. Yeah. Okay. So this is pretty much what Alita was saying. Um, now they're going to take you through. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's just going to be like maybe the first two minutes. Kind of understand credit cards. Um, I know they're probably going to be part of your guys' lives in maybe, you know, five years or six years. So um, let's see. Meet Jasmine. Jasmine is a college student attending State University. Like many college students, Jasmine has a lot of things she needs to buy. Books, laundry baskets, food, and so on. And she can pay for those things with two types of money, debit or credit. Debit is money that comes from a personal bank account. Credit is money that is lent to you by your bank. For example, let's say Jasmine has been using a credit card. Each time Jasmine uses the card to buy something, say a $100 textbook, her bank is loaning her the money. While that sounds nice, be warned, the bank isn't giving Jasmine this money for free. They expect her to pay a certain amount of money each month, called interest, if she doesn't totally pay off her balance by the due date. As you can imagine, this can get very expensive very quickly, especially when factoring in the high annual interest rates, or APRs, that are charged by these companies. However, there is a solution to this rather scary problem. As long as Jasmine always pays off her balance in full by the monthly due date, she'll never pay a cent of interest. Jasmine is shocked and thrilled, but still. Okay, so we'll stop there. But um, I know that they had talked about like high interest and high fees, but Alita, why is it good to use a credit card? Well, it's good to use a credit card, especially in this day and age, because credit is really the determinant for many things, whether you want to get an mm -hmm. apartment, um, whether you want to purchase, you know, a car or really anything, right? Because very few people can purchase items outright. So that means that you're going to be, you're going to have to have, um, you know, some type of payment arrangement. So that way you can have access to certain items. I think the biggest thing about credit is that it is not free money. Um, I think it's so important that people know that, um, like you've seen in the video, the bank is loaning you money. It doesn't mean that they're not giving it to you. It's not a scholarship. And I think um, especially students 
college students, they kind of, they get a credit card and then they're like spending and spending and spending. The bill comes, they can't pay it. Um, they'll pay usually the minimum payment, which could be anywhere from, you know, 25 to $50, depending on what the balance is. Um, and then they get stuck in this cycle of debt. So not only do you have student debt, but then you have credit card debt. So it's really important that you be mindful of that and you make sure that you do not spend more than you can actually repay the following month. Mm -hmm. And then I know Lita was talking about the importance of credit and what and what is credit. Um, we Were you gonna talk about these three bureaus? Should I play the video first or should I? We can skip the video just for okay. just we have like nine minutes. I don't want. I want to make sure. For sure. Can, yeah. So it's really important to know that you know credit bureaus are going to be watching you, right? So we have three main credit bureaus. One is Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So anytime you, um, whether you purchase a new phone, whether you are um, even utilities sometimes, Wi-Fi and stuff like that, they will run a credit check on you. And that is just to see if you are responsible with paying your bills, right? And so you wanna make sure that you're being very careful because if you miss a payment, they will report you negatively to these credit bureaus. And when you go to um, try to get more credit from somewhere else, they're gonna be like, no, you didn't pay these bills properly. And they um, will most likely deny you, um, you know, credit based on that. So you wanna make sure mm -hmm. that you're being very careful because they are reporting you. And going back to another question about, because it was like, oh, is my checking account gonna affect my credit? In short, no. Um, credit and a checking account is very different. Now, there are some other things that we could talk about, but we don't have time. Um, and that's a little bit more in depth. So I'm not going to do that. But a credit and a savings or a checking and a savings account will not be reported directly to your credit in that way. Now, if you are trying to, let's say you're older now and you're trying to get a car and you, you get approved, but then for some reason you're unable to make your payments, they will report you to the credit bureaus, right? And so this is when um, things are reported to the credit bureaus. Do we have another slide? There's so much, we don't um, have a whole time, so I'm explaining really fast, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, this is our last one. Okay, so we'll, I'll just say this. Um, it's important to start now. So it's important to make sure that you have a checking and a savings account. Um, this way, when you do get older, you don't have to worry about going to the check cashers and the payday lenders and things like that because you um, have an, another source that you're able to use. Um, a lot of people don't get banked until later on um, after they've already fell victim to different predatory services. So starting now, hearing this in middle school um, can save you a lot, a lot of money when you grow up. Um, mm -hmm. Also, saving early is extremely important, especially if your goal is to attend college because college is not cheap. Um, and so you want to make sure that you are starting now. So that way you don't have to take out tons of loans in the future. Mm -hmm. And also with credit, even though it's six years, about six seven years away from you, um, it's important to hear these terms now. So that way, when you do get to age 18, you're able to make the best decision for you uh, when it comes to credit. More importantly, you will take care of your credit because you already know um, what you would need to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think that's, is that, is that all you wanted to say, Alita? Yes. Yeah, so we will have five minutes. So does anyone have any questions, particularly surrounding credit, because um, mm -hmm. there's so much uh, to go over for credit, and we unfortunately don't have the time today. And I did want to, in case, we, like I said, there's so much on credit. Um, so the question might be like, do I have credit right now? Uh, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't have any credit. 
So maybe after this, uh, maybe ask your parents, like, can we, can we pull my credit report? Because if you do have some stuff on there, then that is not good. And you definitely want to clean that up. Um, so that is something maybe you could talk to your parents about um, is, you know, oh, yes. Can you share how important it is for our students to take very good care of their SSN? Yeah, um, so that's kind of on the on the layout was going on. If you have credit, if you have, you know, history of taking out car loans and you're 12, um, that means that you might, your SSN might have been compromised and someone's using your identity to buy stuff under your name. So it is very important to take care of your, that SSN, your social security number. Um, it's a very important piece of paper. Never, you know, put it, you never have it on you. I think my mom always kept it for me and I never touched it until I went to college. But um, yeah, don't give out your SSN to anybody either. Um, a lot of people are, you know, pranksters or they're scammers and they call and they ask for it. Never give it to anybody. No one needs to, no one needs to know it. Um, always ask if someone's asking you for it, um, why they need it. But it's, yeah, always keep your social security very safe. Anything, I know Alita, you wanted to say something. Um, yeah, there was another question as well. Um, how do you keep increasing credit? So there's a few different ways to do that. For one, people usually start with a credit card. Um, your actual limit on your credit card is gonna depend upon many factors. One is the income that you actually have coming in. So if you start out, you're only making you know, a, a certain amount a year, you may have a credit card like 900 or 1200. But as you, you, know, you grow, you change careers, you get your job, you graduate college, all those things, your income increases. And by that time, they'll increase your credit limit as well. Um, you can also apply for other credit cards, but I would be very careful with that because again, mm -hmm. Um, that can uh, impact you negatively um, in the future if you're applying for too much credit. Um, so, but to sh answer your question in short, as your income grows, your credit limit, limit should also grow as well. Well, thank you, Walter. Thank you for joining us. I do wanna see if there's any teachers in the audience, if you guys have any questions about um, any of our youth accounts or youth checking or youth savings, uh, you guys can contact us here. These are our emails. Um, but thank you guys for, for logging in and taking a very important step into your future. Um, thank you. Um, and I'll hand it back off to Christina. Thank you so much. And as you all can see, I did launch the polls. Um, so if you have a quick second to complete that poll that has popped up on your screen, we greatly appreciate it. And also we do have another survey that I'll go ahead and include in the chat again. Um, this survey is through SurveyMonkey and it does pertain directly to this workshop that you saw right now. So if you could open it up and complete it at some point today, we'd really appreciate it again. If there are no further questions, I believe that concludes our webinar today. Um, any closing remarks, Ms. Stacy and Ms. Alita? No, no I I'm think- Just really glad that you're learning now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so important. The earlier you the earlier you learn, the better. So I'm happy that you signed up for the workshop, and I hope you learned something. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. Thank all you right. so much. Bye, everybody.